Is the state setting function that's returned from useState async or what? I get asked that question a lot and I can understand why, because the information that is available to you from a Google search is often contradictory and really not that great. The answer is it's complicated and it has a lot to do with how React manages state and re-rendering. So it's worth understanding a lot more and it's worth digging into. Let's get right into it. The short and simple answer is that that state setter that you get back from useState is 100% synchronous. Whether you use it in the form where you give it a single value or you use it in the form where you give it a callback function that takes the previous value and returns a new value. That state setter does not return a promise and when you give it a function that is not an asynchronous callback. The reason that this gets confusing is because setting that state creates an asynchronous cascade of events in React and in your React app that is asynchronous and makes it feel like setting that state is asynchronous all on its own. So let's take an example application and dig really into it. But before we get into it, I am super pleased and happy to announce that this is the first ever sponsored blue collar coder video. And we are sponsored by Get Nation and the React Advanced Conference. I couldn't be happier because I'm loving on this conference. Look at these awesome talks. There are three different talks on micro front ends. There are five talks at least on React performance. How cool is that? There are talks on mental health and careers, which is a huge deal for me. And there's also a talk on island architecture, which I can't wait to see. And I gotta say, even more exciting for me is the fact that we will be streaming one of the tracks from the first day of this conference right here live on this channel for free. How cool is that? So check out the link in the description down below and meet me there virtually at this awesome conference. All right, let's get back into it. So here's our little demo component. It's a search component. It has an input field in it and it returns some data once you've made some changes in that input field to specify a search that it then runs against this API. It manages some state and it does that API fetch in this on change handler. So let's walk through the first render of this step by step. The first thing that's gonna happen is that React is gonna call our function. And our function is going to register a piece of state with React by using useState. So what's really happening behind the scenes is that React is adding to its VDOM tree the fact that our function is the component that is rendering this particular part of the tree. And there is also an array of state data associated with our instance of this particular component. So we are putting in the first slot in that state array, an empty string. And then useState is returning to us a copy of that string, as well as the state setter. So now why is it returning to us a copy of the string and not the string? Well, in JavaScript, strings, numbers, and Booleans are passed by value and returned by value. That means that Whenever you return a string, you're actually returning a copy of it. Arrays and objects are returned and passed by reference. So in this case, it's a string, so we get a copy of that string. And then we get that state setter. And that state setter is what's going to go and when we give it a new value, it will set that value in that array slot. And then React will see that we are dirty and we need to be re-rendered. Next up, we have our use state that's gonna have our list of results. So we get the results array back and we get the setter. Now, interestingly, in this case, we get the exact same reference for the array in the results as we put in as the initial state. That's not particularly important in this particular case, but it's important to know later as you work more with references to arrays and objects within React. So next up is our onChange function. Now, what's interesting about this function is that it's not just a JavaScript function, it's actually a closure. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we have referenced some state in the host function, in this case, search. And what JavaScript is gonna do is it's going to capture the value of that state at that time when it creates this function. Now search, in this case, is set to an empty string. That means that in effect, this portion of that fetch is going to have an empty string in it when we call this function, this closure function. And then we have our return. 
our turn is going to return a set of React elements. So it's gonna have a div, and then within that, it's gonna have that input where we set that value and that change handler. And then we're going to iterate through the list of results, which is empty, so that's basically a no op. Now, as I said, this returns a set of React elements, and that's really an important distinction because a lot of people think that what this returns is straight up DOM elements and that everything is re-rendered in the tree whenever a component re-renders, and that's absolutely not the case. In this case, we're returning React elements. Those are added in to the VDOM tree maintained by React, and then once all of the components in our tree are re-rendered, it then diffs the VDOM versus the existing DOM and makes any changes. In this case, it will probably add a div and add that input. And that's very important to understand because folks really worry about how fast React re-renders. And you don't really need to. If you just simply re-render this component 100 times, once it created those DOM elements, it would do absolutely nothing to the DOM unless those values changed. So it's going to be very, very quick. Okay, so let's say our customer now hits F inside of our input field, and that's going to trigger that on change. So that on change then calls first that set search with the new target value off that event. So that's going to have a string with F in it. Now that setter is going to go set that slot that's associated with this instance of this component, and that's it. Then we're going to run that fetch. And that fetch is going to use the search that we captured before, which is an empty value, an empty string. And that's where our bug and our frustration comes from because we're out of sync. We think that we're searching for that string with F in it, but in fact, we are searching for that empty string. But let's not dig too far into that yet. Let's deal with that in a bit. Let's keep going through this because there are some other issues along the way. Of course, we do that fetch, that's asynchronous, that's now in flight, and we get to the end of the function. Now, what really happens is that we return control to React at this point, but I think some folks believe that we then fall into this return in the host function, and we definitely don't do that. That's not the way that nested functions work in JavaScript or React. So all that we do is we just hit the end of the function and we give control back to React which in turn says, great, this component is now dirty, the state has changed, so we need to re-render. So it again, reruns this function. Now we call that use state, and we pick up the value in slot one, which is the string that has the F in it. So now we've got a copy of that F string. And we get the results, the results are empty, as they were before. And we go down, and we build a new on-change closure. Now, the only difference between this closure and the previous closure is that the search value is now the F value, the string with the F in it, as opposed to the empty string that we had before. So now we get down into that return section where we get the div and we get the input. And in this case, the only thing that's changed is that value. So we return these new React elements. Again, those get merged in that VDOM tree and React does its differencing between that and the DOM. And it notices that we still have that div, we still have that input, but now the only change that is changing is the value. And so the only thing we need to do is then set that one attribute. And that's very, very fast. Again, you don't need to worry too much about re-renders in React. So the next thing that happens, assuming that the customer didn't type another key on their keyboard, is that the fetch returns. And so we get the then, which we then get the JSON out of. That too is asynchronous. So it cascades into the next then. That then is, has an array of results, supposedly, from that API, which it then passes to set results, which sets the second slot associated with this particular component instance to that new array. Now, a lot of folks in previous videos have looked at that and said, whoa, you need to do this as a function. The function needs to take the data and then it needs to cut, call set results with that data. And no, that, it, it's exactly the same thing. All you're doing is just like adding a new function in there. So it's fine. You can just call set results. Of course, that set results in turn causes React to say, well, this component is dirty again and we need to re-render it. So one more time, we go through this rendering cycle. We get out the F value out of our search. We get out the new value for the results. So we've got our data. That's awesome. We create another closure, which is fine. And then we go through the return 
In this case, the new thing that we're doing is we are now iterating through the results in that map, creating a bunch of React elements, which are then added to the tree when React does its diffing process. So now we understand that rendering flow and how all of that state management works. And of course we see the bug, which is that we are using the stored stale version of the search as opposed to using the new fresh value coming in off of that current target value. And this is where I see a lot of folks put in a console log and they look to see what the value of search is at that point. And that's when they do the Jackie Chan, ah, because they're like, wait a second, I did set search and somehow search is not what I set it to be. It must be asynchronous and it's not asynchronous. What's happening is all you're doing is just setting that value in the state that's associated with the component instance. You're not in any way updating that local copy of search because it's just a string. It's not a proxy. There's nothing magic about it. It's just a copy of a string. So there's no possible way that React could actually update that. I mean, I guess they could give us like a third parameter on use state, which would be some sort of dynamic getter that would get the value that you just set somehow. But well, one, we don't have that. And two, I don't actually don't think we need it. So the simplest fix in this case would just be to put the value that we get from the event into the fetch. Pretty easy, right? Of course, if that is not to the liking of your code sensibilities, what you could do is define a new search value as a local variable, and then set that to the value coming in off the event, and then use that new search value for both the state setter and also the fetch. And that's the simplest way to do it. And in all honesty, in this case, that is totally fine. But let's imagine that we had some buttons and those buttons would, when you click them, set a predefined search value so that you could either type in your search value or you could click on that button and do a predefined search. So there's two different ways of setting that search value. Now, do you really want those button click handlers to also have that same fetch code? Eh, that doesn't seem so great. So what we can do instead is use the reactive state management system that is built into React. So React has two hooks for creating state, use state and use reducer. And it's got three hooks for monitoring state, use effect, use memo, and use callback. We can use use effect in this case to listen for changes in search and then call fetch when search changes. So let's do that. Let's migrate that fetch out of our on change function and into a use effect and then create a dependency array where we depend on search. And that tells React that whenever search changes, we want to rerun this effect. So let's go through the whole thing again, a little bit faster this time. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to register the states as we did before. And then we register that use effect. And that's the same closure mechanism as we had before. That search is captured at the empty string. And then we give it the dependency array with just a single empty string in it. That use effect is not called at this point. Then we go on to the on change, we create the on change. Then we fall through into the render, we return the React elements, the VDOM is updated, the DOM is updated. And then finally, React looks to see, oh, you have an effect. Let's see if we need to run that. It looks at the old values of the dependency array, which in this case are just undefined, versus the new values, which is just an empty string and says, well, those two are different. So therefore I need to run that use effect. So that closure is then run, fetch is run and the data gets returned asynchronously and the set is run and the whole thing goes again. Of course, this is a little bit different behavior than we had before. What this means is we will initially run an empty search. If you don't wanna do that, all you need to do is add a conditional in there to check to make sure that the search is what you want and only run it when it is maybe a non-empty string, which is totally fine. So the really cool part about this approach is now there is this dynamic relationship between this search state and this fetch so that whenever a search changes in for any reason, that fetch is then rerun. For example, if we type something into that input field, we then set that search value that then causes a re-render of our component, which again, re-registers that use effect with that new dependency array and that closure. And then once 
React evaluates those effects, it looks to see if there's any difference between the old dependency array and the new dependency array. Now the new dependency array has the new piece of text. The old dependency array has no text in it at all. And therefore you get the refetch and that's perfect. Exactly the kind of behavior that we want and really making the best use of the reactive state management system built right into React. Okay, so what have we learned? Well, we've learned that that state setter is super duper synchronous, 100%. But we've learned that the result of that is kind of asynchronous. So yeah, you can see why there is this misunderstanding about how this state setter works. But more importantly, I think we've built our own React brain a little bit. You've got to get to the point with React where you think about how React works and you can work through it just as we have in this video, step by step by step. And you can reason about it without adding console logs just in your own mind. Or you can just verbalize it using something like rubber duck debugging or talk somebody else through it. And sometimes that works perfectly, but you've got to build up that muscle of that React brain in your head. And that works in any framework. You need to build up a view brain if you're a view programmer or a SolidJS brain if you're a SolidJS programmer. If you want to build reliable, resilient code in React, you have to build up that muscle of understanding why React works the way that it works so that you use React as opposed to React kind of using you. All right, well, I hope this helps deepen your understanding of React. Of course, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you really like the video, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you'll be surprised with a new video every couple of weeks that will deepen your understanding of these front end topics. See you next week.